he does have a question today. Okay, with the advancement of online shopping, what's better, shopping online or shopping at a store? That's a that's a pretty darn good question. Um, I'm I'm gonna say, especially with the day and age we are living in, take advantage of both. And what I mean is like, you know, go online and, you know, order your cigars that you want to smoke daily, stuff like that. You can probably get them a little bit cheaper and a little bit bigger bulk, but you don't want to neglect your stores because your stores are going to be able to introduce you to stuff you've never seen online. You go in there, they have tons of different brands you can look at, pick you up a couple of them. And especially if you're, you know, a seasoned smoker or a newbie cigar smoker, being in the humidor itself. People will teach you things that you never knew before. So just, you know, sit down, have a conversation with them, have a smoke with them. Uh, but don't neglect your, you know, your brick and mortar stores by any means. Uh, go see these guys. You'll learn a lot from them. And you'll probably have a good time just sitting down smoking with them. Uh, so that's my opinion on it. Yeah, I can't argue any of that wisdom. I definitely get my cigars from both. I do I do like going into the humidor and, and uh, hearing what's new and, and talking to the people working the shop, hanging out in the lounge, that sort of thing. So it's definitely a, a, a part of the experience that I enjoy. Can you get to talk to people like Mike, who, you know, know more about cigars than I'll probably ever know? Do I get, do I get yeah, to talk sure. about this, this conversation? Uh, you oh, yeah, you do. you're yes, all sir. welcome sure. to chime in. We would love okay. to hear your opinion. Buy all your stuff from uh, Roma Craft. That's what I'm hearing. No, we don't, we don't sell it. We don't sell it. Yeah, Direct. Right? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that's not how that plays. So there's this, this kind of leads into a question about, you know, um, for the guys in at Atlanta, right? So <clears throat> I think from a manufacturer, and this kind of goes into what, so I think it's important to, to have a, a relationship with your tobacconist. And the challenge with that is a couple of things. There are less and less people like Penny and there are more and more people who are all about kind of the experience, volume, cigar bars, and these other types of things. So what I see, which is kind of uh, like you need all of them, right? You need, uh, like, for example, we have a, a liquor store here in town. We don't sell to them, but it's called Specs, right? You can go into any Specs. They're probably $2. They have a cash price that they do. They Basically, if you pay with a debit card, it's cheaper than if you pay with a credit card. Um, there's no one in there to help you, but you can definitely go in there and get things in, inexpensive. And I'm talking about you can get, you know, Padron Anniversario series. You can go in there and get, uh, you know, I've seen, you know, uh, flying pigs in there. I've seen, I've seen it all. Like, and they buy big and they have everything, but you're ne you're not going to get any kind of service. Like, there's no one there to engage with you to talk to you about, you know, um, let me take you on this journey of, you know, maybe you started off with flavored. And now you want something a little bit lighter, but you kind of want to get off, you know, out of that into more traditional types of, of cigars. Um, you know, what's a Dominican Puro? What's a Honduran Puro? What's a, you know, Nicaraguan? Um, and take you on that journey to find out, okay, well, I like this one better from this region. Okay, well, let's go into that and then explore, you know. So, you know, here's some, you know, here's a cigar that's got, you know, uh, Ometepe or, or Jalapa or Esteli Lajero. Or this has, you know, something out of Don Lee and kind of its origins and, you know, something that, you know, maybe like Christian or his dad are doing, you know, with CLE um, in, in, in that region or something that, you know, Ray Oleas is doing out of the Dominican Republic or, or Hochi or something like that. Right. So um, so th so there's definitely a conversation piece that 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 should have that needs to happen. And, and the problem is when you kind of go in and you're in, online and you go into some of these groups, you know, people will, will, you know, rag on you if it's not, you know, ultra premium or they'll make fun of you if it's, you know, whatever. Right. So it's like, um, so if you're looking for help and you're looking for education, realistically, the tobacconist is the one that should be able to, to kind of help guide you through that. Right. Um, but so many people are really concerned and worried about the, the right label and the right band and the right whatever. Uh, and so that, that um, you know, is difficult. 
the other side of that is if you go into your local tobacconist and you said, hey, do you have a brand like Romacraft? And they go, who? What's that? I don't, you know, you know, you know I talked to, I saw Skip and Mike or, you know, whatever. Well, who's that? You know, and they're disengaged, right? And they have no idea, you know, of a company like us. Um, then, then, you know, then you're kind of handicapped, right? Because then you're kind of forced because that, that, that tobacconist wasn't willing to say, well, let me look into it and kind of figure out because, you know, as a consumer, you've signaled to the retailer tobacconist that, Hey, I'm interested in this, right. Then they call, they call the fat, they call the manufacturer and go, Hey, I, I need to get an account. Um, I've got a guy that's looking for, you know, this, this, and this. And then I, you know, I, and I got to go, well, I'm, you know, I, I'm, you know, to open up an account with me, you got to do all this other stuff. And like, well, I don't want to do all that shit. Fuck that guy. You know, it's not worth it. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well now they got to go online to the people or, or somebody who can mail order or mail ship or whatever, or hopefully they'll find someone like Penny that can drop ship or, you know, uh, you know, handle, handle it over the phone and get it to you. Um, but, but that there's a disconnect in, in that, that part, right? Because, um, you know, as, as far as, um, you know, you go into certain, from a manufacturer perspective, I, I, we only so the, so Romacraft only makes a million cigars a year, right? Which is not a lot. And to kind of put that in perspective, you know, Drew Estate's probably doing seventy five million a year, right? So, and that's you know, uh, it could be more now that you know the the Blacken series and Willie's cigar and the stuff that they do with uh, you know uh, Sweet Jane, Mary Jane stuff, and uh, Deadwood, and you go on and on and on like. Like they're pumping out a lot of cigars, right? And, and all different classes of cigars, flavored to everything else. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just they've gotten to a point, to a level, to where the demand for what they're doing is a is a it's a monster. Um, so a retailer or a tobacconist likes that because they don't really have to hand sell anything. People come in, they grab a scoop of it, they go to the register, they check it out, and they get out, right? And so. There's kind of this shift into, you know, um, and I get it. Would you rather sell handfuls of cigars to people that just come in, buy their stuff, and leave, or would you have to sell one or two cigars to somebody and help? You know, so you're either trying to look for a, a customer for life, or you want the volume, right? And or do you want the, the right. mixture of both? And and that, that's really, uh, you know, so I've got a customer out of Arizona, Fine Ash, Sam and Rosie, really good friends of ours. So I've vacationed with them, we've traveled with them. They're, they used to be really, really boutique. They opened up a cigar bar in, in uh, over by the by the, the Arizona Cardinals, you know, football stadium, and and now it's basically, you know, there's a line of people, you know, trying to ring in and get the cigars and go, you know, drink and smoke to to have a conversation piece about, you know, uh, Room 101 or Caldwell or Foundation or Saka or whatever. Like you can't have that conversation because guys are just you know, they want to go get their cigar, get lit and go sit down and drink. And so there's a shift, you know, maybe, you know, between two and five o'clock, you can have that conversation. But, you know, once the bars, you know, the music's on and the, you know, whatever, like, <laughs> like it's, it's, uh, you know, so you hope that you have a, a good enough, you know, kind of a brand established in that, in that situation where people just come in and they're grabbing your part, your cigar out of the humidor and it's part of the rotation. Um, but that comes after doing multiple events and being in the, the, the human or pretty frequently having a good, re, you know, relationship with the customer. So the customers are then telling people like, Oh, go grab that cigar. That's, you know, I just saw them talk, smoking, you know, the, the Aquitaine on this podcast. Uh, let's try that one. You know, so you, you hope you do enough to keep that, that conversation going to do your part of it. Right. Because what's happened is it's not, it's, you know, no one gives two rats ass that we make a cigar between seven to $10 that's available and as good as it's going to get, you know, what'd you pay for this, the whiskey rebellion you're smoking today? Hell, I don't know, Mike, I've slept since then. Eight bucks, $9, seven, probably eight or nine bucks. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so to the, to, you know, so on, so on, on one side, I often hear, why would I sell your $8 cigar and make, you know, a couple bucks on that when I can sell, you know, uh, xyz that are twenty dollars twenty five dollars cigars and i can make two x amount of money on my you know so if they're going to come in and buy one cigar and have two or three drinks i would rather sell them the 20 ish dollar cigar and sell them two cocktails and charge them 75 dollars 
versus a, a you know the the ten dollar cigar and a beer. You know what I mean? Like so, um, yeah. So, and it's it's difficult. Go ahead. But I say it's great you bring this up because with my tobacconist, you know, these guys know that I I like to frequent a place called Thick Ash Cigar. And anytime I'm trying to source something specific, I will go call him first. Now, he does have a smaller humidor, but he is so open to listening to what you're asking for. Sure. So when I, call, when I called him about Romacraft, he was like, unfortunately, I've never heard of him, but you need to tell me a little bit about it. So I explained, you know, I was like, you know, I, I like Romacraft. I've had a couple of them. They're really good cigars. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get one for the podcast I'm doing. And he was like, all right, describe the band to me. Let me know what it's like. I'll see if I can reach out to him. Let's see what we can do for you, okay? And I was like, that's great. And he's done that every time I've asked him. And if he doesn't have something, he's been like, yes, I carried that, but it didn't move very well. So I stopped carrying it because, again, I have limited room. Um, but he is so open. And, you know, shout out to Tim and Thick Ash because he is he is all about his customers. He wants you to come in. He wants you to have a good time. He wants you to, you know, smoke good products. Oh, that's great. So, 